Hello everyone, welcome back to Apodic Catedic, the channel that discusses corrosion based on standard. Before we dive into our topic, I'd like to give a disclaimer. The purpose of this video is to make it easier for you to learn and understand corrosion control based on personal interpretation and experience. This video is not an official interpretation or explanation released by NACE or AMPP. Therefore, if there is any difference in interpretation or understanding, it is up to you to choose which interpretation to follow. The standards discussed in this video may have been updated, so I urge you all to compare the standards I discuss with the latest ones. Now let's go to the general part. 1.1 This standard presents accepted methods and practices for the control of external corrosion on buried or submerged steel, stainless steel, cast iron, ductile iron, copper, and aluminum piping systems. The statement means that the standard provides a set of approved and recognized techniques and procedures for preventing external corrosion on piping systems made of steel, stainless steel, cast iron, ductile iron, copper, and aluminum that are buried or submerged. External corrosion refers to the damage or degradation that occurs on the surface of the pipe exposed to the environment, which can ultimately weaken the pipe and lead to leaks, ruptures, or failures. Then proceed to point 1.2. This standard is intended to serve as a guide for establishing requirements for control of external corrosion on the following systems. 1.2.1 New Piping Systems A proven method of corrosion control, example, coating supplemented with CP should be provided in the initial design and maintained during the service life of the piping system, unless investigations indicate that corrosion control is not required. Consideration should be given to the construction of piping in a manner that facilitates the use of inline inspection ILI, tools. 1.2.2 Existing Coated Piping Systems CP should be provided and maintained which includes the maintenance of coating as necessary, unless investigations indicate that CP is not required. 1.2.3 Existing uncoated piping systems, studies can be made to determine the extent and rate of corrosion on existing uncoated piping systems. When these studies indicate that corrosion affects the safe or economic operation of the system, adequate corrosion control measures shall be taken. This statement outlines the scope of the standard, which is to provide guidelines for controlling external corrosion on various types of buried or submerged piping systems. The standard provides recommendations for three types of piping systems, new piping systems, existing coated piping systems, and existing uncoated piping systems. For new piping systems, the standard recommends a proven method of corrosion control, such as coating supplemented with cathodic protection, which should be provided in the initial design and maintained throughout the service life of the piping system. Additionally, consideration should be given to constructing the piping system in a way that allows for the use of inline inspection tools. For existing coated piping systems, cathodic protection should be provided and maintained, which includes the upkeep of the coating as necessary unless investigations indicate that cathodic protection is not required. For existing uncoated piping systems, studies can be conducted to determine the extent and rate of corrosion. If these studies reveal that corrosion is affecting the safe or economic operation of the system, adequate corrosion control measures should be taken. Overall, this statement emphasizes the importance of implementing effective corrosion control measures to ensure the safe and reliable operation of piping systems. Then we read point 1.3. The provisions of this standard are intended to be applied under the direction of competent persons who, by reason of knowledge of the physical sciences and the principles of engineering and mathematics, acquired by education and related practical experience, are qualified to engage in the practice of corrosion control on underground or submerged metallic piping systems. Note, such persons might be, but are not limited to, registered professional engineers or persons recognized as corrosion specialists or CP specialists by NACE, if their professional activities include suitable experience in external corrosion control of underground or submerged metallic piping systems. 
this statement is saying that the guidelines provided in the standard should be implemented by individuals who are qualified and knowledgeable in the area of corrosion control on underground or submerged metallic piping systems. These competent persons should have a background in physical sciences, engineering, and mathematics, and also have practical experience in corrosion control. The note clarifies that these competent persons may include registered professional engineers or individuals recognized as corrosion specialists or CP specialists by NACE, as long as they have experience in external corrosion control of underground or submerged metallic piping systems. In other words, this standard is meant to be implemented by professionals who are qualified and experienced in corrosion control to ensure that the practices outlined in the standard are applied correctly and effectively. Then we read point 1.4. Special conditions in which CP is ineffective or only partially effective sometimes exist. See paragraph 6.2.1.4 for examples. Deviation from this standard might be warranted in specific situations provided that corrosion control personnel in responsible charge are able to demonstrate that the objectives expressed in this standard have been achieved. This statement acknowledges that there may be situations where cathodic protection CP, may not be fully effective in controlling external corrosion on underground or submerged metallic piping systems, despite following the guidelines in this standard. Paragraph 6.2.1.4 provides examples of such special conditions, which include high resistivity soils, alternating current AC, interference, and stray current interference. The statement goes on to say that in such situations, deviation from this standard may be necessary, but only if corrosion control personnel who are responsible for the system can demonstrate that they have achieved the objectives of this standard in some other way. This means that any deviation from the standard should be backed up by a sound understanding of the principles of corrosion control and careful consideration of the specific conditions and factors that affect the system. The ultimate goal is to ensure the safe and economic operation of the piping system while minimizing the risk of external corrosion. Finally, for the general part, namely point 1.5 which reads, this standard is not intended for use in the control of internal corrosion. The statement means that the particular standard being referred to is not designed or intended to address the issue of internal corrosion. In other words, the standard is not meant to provide guidance or requirements for preventing or controlling corrosion that occurs on the inside of a material, such as the interior of a pipe or container. The standard may instead focus on other areas or aspects of the material or process, and it is not appropriate or applicable to use it as a basis for managing or mitigating internal corrosion. This statement may be included in the scope or purpose section of a standard or specification to clarify its limitations and to help users understand its intended applications and areas of coverage. Thank you for tuning into our video discussing NACE SP 0169-2013 Standard Practice Control of External Corrosion on Underground or Submerged Metallic Piping Systems. In this second part, we covered the general information about the standard. We hope that the information we've shared has been helpful and provided a better understanding of how to protect metallic piping systems from corrosion. Remember that cathodic protection is an important technology that can help prevent damage and extend the service life of metallic pipes. If you have any further questions or would like to share your experiences related to this video, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to watch our next video where we will be discussing Section 2, which covers definitions, abbreviations, and acronyms. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on our new videos from Cathodic Protection. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.